The final score, Wrexham 3, Swansea City 3 in the women's team. Their first match back in the top level of Welsh football. And wow, I mean, what a game and what a performance. Let's get the context in first. Wrexham, of course, after a glorious season last year, promoted to the Adran Plemier. But goodness me. I mean, what a tough beginning. Swansea City, second in the league last year. Regular winners of the trophy. Champions League experience. International caps in there through their team. And, wow, well, we only failed to beat them because of a 94th minute deflected shot. It was a, a big, big performance by Steve Dale's team. And they deserve massive, massive pats on the back. I mean, let's be honest... A key objective here is going to be getting into the right half of the split. The table will split, and then the top four will play off, and the bottom four will play off. And it's key to get into that top half. Well, I think they show that we can survive with the big teams that already lined up against us. The starting lineup had two debutants, the two centre backs, Karen Allen and Luisa Doran. And apart from that, it was the side that got that title last season. And, well, we, we had to earn our right to get into the game, if you will. Swansea City, like I said, they're a good team. And despite a downpour just after the kickoff, which made the pitch very slick, uh, Swansea was still popping it around really nicely and had a couple of opportunities to score in the first 20 minutes. The first one, Chivers, constantly dangerous. Have swept the ball across to the far post, a free header for Bush, but she put it back across face of goal rather than towards goal, rather. A real opportunity, this. And Doran did brilliantly, facing her own goal to dive in and managed to get enough elevation on her head as to put it over the bar. It was a nasty moment for her, which she handled brilliantly. There was also a fabulous moment of skill by Swansea as well. John Davis running into the edge of the area, magnificent juggling skill to tee up the shot and then drove it in against the bar. The ball dropped down and uh, was partially cleared, driven back in, though, by Jenkins, and a good save low to her left by Del Morgan, pushing it away and then retrieving it before it could go out of a, for a corner. But a terrific, dangerous moment. Sadly, uh, John Davis would not last that long because she then had a, a horrible freak injury. Amber Lightfoot tracking back down the left-hand side and doing really well to slide in and make a challenge and prevent a dangerous moment occurring. But John Davis, the recipient of the challenge, not a foul, like I said, fell really nastily and awkwardly and looked to pick up a shoulder injury or arm injury. It was a, a nasty little incident. Um, and so, sadly, that was the end of her game as she was taken away on a stretcher. Halfway through the first half, Wrexham took the lead. Now, although we didn't have a lot of the ball in the Swansea half, I mean, there's no question throughout the game, Swansea monopolised possession. Wrexham were quick on the break and were picking gaps out and picking out channels and finding runners really, really efficiently. And in the end, it paid off. It was a nice move as well, as it's got to be said. Hughes breaking down the left-hand side, tried to play a through ball for Amber Lightfoot, which was... Uh, blocked, but Hughes was really sharp, won the ball back tw uh, 25 yards out, squared it to Gibney, who well, did ever so well, just took a touch. Uh, a Gibney, that's a Gibney, a Gibbard, sorry, took a beautiful touch and then just slotted the perfect ball down the right channel. Pritchard running onto it, and the keeper narrowing the angle and the defender coming across and finished it brilliantly. First time finish across the keeper into the bottom left corner and Wrexham were ahead. And like I said, although Swansea had a lot of pressure, Wrexham were defending grittily, were trying not to drop too far into the box and were looking good on the break. And it was a fair enough lead. In fact, Swansea, I thought, deteriorated for the rest of the second half. They started rushing things a little bit. In midfield, Lily Jones and TJ Dickens were really crunching in with some proper tackles, as indeed, as always, were Aaron Lovett and Phoebe Davis. And, yeah, Swansea really struggled to get their passing rhythm going. They were nearly caught out a couple of times as well. They started to 
improve near the end of the half. Chivers setting a powerful shot from just outside the box. Good save low to a right by Del Morgan, pushing it behind for a corner. And then a real opportunity when Williams, the centre-back, who kept driving forwards for Swansea, put in an excellent cross. Pinder, who'd come on for Stacey John Davis with a flick header, which he put across Del Morgan, but just wide of the far post. However, the last moment of promise came for Wrexham. In the last minute of the half, Doran driving the ball over the top. Hughes tearing through the middle. The flag goes up. It was a tight call. Have uh, To the naked eye, she looked onside to me. She'd been one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Looking at the replays on TV, uh, it's not really decisive. S4C had a lot of cameras. Uh, didn't tend to use them for offside replays and so there was no replay so for what you could see it wasn't clear but it certainly looked very tight to the naked eye she looked on side so Wrexham go in 1-0 ahead Swansea started the second half quite well and had one massive moment of danger a terrific free kick by Chivers from a long way out which hit the bar and dropped down and Jenkins just couldn't get on top of the header from just outside the six yard box and put it way over the bar but then in the 56th minute Wrexham made it 2-0 Kudos to Lily Jones stepping up and intercepting deep in Swansea's half. A terrific run then by her and a perfectly weighted pass inside to the unmarked Rosie Hughes. Rosie Hughes, unmarked, right down the middle, in the penalty area, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, does what Rosie Hughes does when she's unmarked, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, right down the middle of the penalty area, first time left foot finish. 2-0 to Wrexham absolutely terrific real scenes of celebration as well and oh, Wrexham delighted pushed on and could easily have got a third on the hour indeed Wrexham did get the ball into the net terrific ball down the flank by Dickens Hughes oh, was so sharp I mean she was isolated up front so she engaged with the defenders down the left hand side drew them to her but held on to the ball, just waited and waited, and then slotted a great ball into the six-yard box, and Pritchard, who'd made the same run she made when she scored the winner against Connors Key Nomads, uh, and, sorry, pardon, Britain Ferry in the promotion playoff, slid in and slotted it home again. The flag went up. Now, OK, only got one angle on this from the TV footage. It looks again very very tight I the more I look at it the more it looks onside to me to be honest uh, Pritchard's run has taken her goal side of the defenders so I, I don't think that's the issue the issue is is she ahead of the ball Rosie Hughes is on the left flank she's about what six seven yards out and she the pass has rolled pretty square to Pritchard my gut feeling is I'm not convinced it's offside you know but it was given. A couple of minutes later, Wrexham had another chance. This time, Doran again with a long ball over the top. Hughes racing onto it under pressure from the last defender. The keeper came out. Hughes saw the opportunity to lob it over, but didn't quite get hold of the shot, and it went wide rather tamely. Now then, four minutes later, here's something that uh, you know, I just want to be bad-minded about. A bad mess by Swansea, but interesting circumstances. Um, Del Morgan with a poor kick which landed in midfield, and Bush immediately helped it on to Pinder. A great chance in the right channel. She made a horrible, horrible hash of it. Really mishit it, and it just trickled well wide. It was a, a glorious chance, 1-1 one, one with the keeper. My bad-minded comment is, she was definitely offside, but there was no flag. I think Wrexham may be a little unfortunate. We had two very tight offside decisions go against us, whereas Swansea there had an absolutely glorious chance, which they didn't take, thankfully, which was definitely offside. Pinder was standing in the box when the ball was played to her. There were no Wrexham players in the box. So it felt like an easy spot for the, the linesman, to be honest. But anyway, that's life. It didn't go in. But uh, Wrexham could have done with that sort of decision at the other end for one of those chances that they'd carved out. Swansea started to turn the screw a little bit. A corner coming in was met by Legala. First touch since coming on as a sub with a firm header. Brilliant save by Morgan from close range, getting a hand up to push the ball over the bar. But Swansea were now starting to push on more and more. Wrexham were dropping a bit too deep and were struggling to really play those out balls to the quick attacking players. 
catastrophe in two ways in the 75th minutes. Firstly, because Swansea got a goal back. Lake, who was a threat down the left-hand side, would soon become a threat in a, a, threat in a very different way, as you'll as you see shortly, driving a very good cross into the near post. Too close to keep him, maybe, actually, to be fair. But Morgan couldn't hold on to it and pinned the tap to into an empty net. And the second catastrophic element of that was that Morgan damaged her knee as she tried to grab the ball back and had to go off really worryingly. She was limping very heavily after the match as well. On for her debut came Charlotte de Bolland, uh, but it really wasn't what Wrexham needed at that point, not least because, of course, with legs tiring, it was an extra substitution used up, so it meant that the likes of Libby McKenzie couldn't come on, uh, or Katie Sharp to stiffen up the defence. It was a blow to Wrexham, and I feel I should mention the tired legs element of it. This was a superb performance, says not least because of the physical demands. I mean, first game of the season, as we've seen with the men's team, can be a bit of a physical test. And this game had an extra 20 minutes added on to it because there were nine minutes added time in the first half, mainly for Stacey John Davis's injury. And then Morgan's injury meant there were 11 minutes added on to the second half. And, you know, these are newly semi-pro players on both sides, to be fair. But uh, it was a bit of a physical ask to to keep going to the end, especially as Wrexham going to use two outfield subs. And there were some really tired legs out there, but they kept battling to the last. But, you know, when the, the team's getting worn down a bit, it's inevitable that being tired, you'll drop a little deep. And that allowed Swansea to monopolise things. And they got the equaliser in the 84th minute. A ball coming into the box, half cleared. Great finish by Chivers on the edge of the D, striking the volley perfectly and putting it over Bolland to make it an equaliser. However, things really kicked off in the 89th minute. There have been a few rum challenges starting to come in in the latter stages. I mean, there have been a lot of hard tackles all the way through, but yeah, it was starting to get a little bit tasty. There was then an odd incident where Wrexham had a set piece on the left-hand side and Pritchard went down off the ball. The fans who were near it were furious. Uh, it seemed she'd been grabbed hold of. Nothing was given. The ball was played in again. And the same thing happened again. It was a penalty this time. <laughs> because people were watching it. Amazingly, the ref didn't see it. Pritchard wrestled to the ground. But justice was done. Because the ball was cleared out. Came back in. Pritchard was there to help it into the goal mouth. It looked like a great chance for Hughes, but she was calm enough when a defender quickly closed her down to realise that it wasn't a great chance, and if she just had a thrash at it, the chances are it wouldn't be a goal. So brilliantly, she pinned the centre-back, held it up, and then when the time was right, rolled it to the substitutes, making her debut, Hannah Keriakopoulos, and she drove it home with glee, Wrexham ahead in the 89th minute. Uh moment later, another instance happened which looked like it was turning the game decisively in Wrexham's way. A bizarre one. This. I said Lake was dangerous on down the flank. Well, very dangerous on this occasion. Pritchard went in on her with a good tackle. It was a hard tackle. Ref didn't give a foul. Lake didn't like it. And as Pritchard was picking herself up, Lake just took a huge hack at her. It was just wild. It was just oh, uh, unbelievable. Referee saw it. Red card straight away. Lake had lost her head. Uh, Alan came up to remonstrate with her. She sh and Lake shoved her away. Big firm push. Uh, that might be getting the referee's uh, report. I hope it does, actually, for the simple reason that Alan got bucked for walking up to her. I, I mean, I think you're entitled in the heat of the moment when you just see one of your teammates kicked in the air off the ball. I think you're entitled as captain to march up and say, Oi, you can't do that to my teammates. So you got bucked, uh, which I thought was very poor. So when you wreck some, a goal up and a player up, and you're thinking, right, OK, this is promising. But as I said, 11 added minutes. And Swansea, to their immense credit, with 10 players, kept pushing and pushing and got their reward in very, very cruel circumstances in the fourth minute of added time. Horsford, who'd been a real threat throughout the game, mostly down the left, 
had come into the middle sort of thing, trying to have a bit more involvement, so they desperately looked for the equaliser. She did really well to get past two players and then struck a shot from distance, which took an enormous deflection and sent the ball arcing into the net. Absolutely nothing a Bolland could do about it and a cruel way to lose that lead. The worry now is that with the momentum going that way, it was a danger that Wrexham in the seven remaining minutes might concede again and Pinda with only about a minute left, had to do ever so well to race off her line and make a save at the feet of a, of a striker as the ball was played threateningly into the box. But then Wrexham held on. There was a little moment of frustration at the final whistle because just as the whistle was about to be blown, it was launched over the top and Hughes timed her run perfectly and was racing clear on the goalkeeper and the ref blew his whistle. I think, to be fair... He just saw the clearance from blue. He didn't look up and see that Hughes was chasing it, but, you know, that is rather irksome. I mean, she looked, it looked like she was going to get there first and would have had a chance to run around the keeper and score. So, cruel ending for Wrexham, but a brilliant performance. Like I said, this is, this is as good as the opposition gets in this division. I, I did wonder beforehand whether they might hand out a little bit of a lesson and just let us see that I mean, we need a season of bedding in. But instead, that was an absolutely magnificent performance by Wrexham and a superb start to the season. Key now that they can follow that up by getting something pomp on to breathe next weekend, but a brilliant start. Looking at the performances, I mean, a horrible shame that Morgan went off injured, but uh, she made a couple of good saves and one superb save, that late one to tip the ball over the bar. Across the back, well, I mean... Right, you know what you're going to get with Phoebe Davis at fullback. You're going to get some of the some of the best tackles you're going to see all season, and she didn't disappoint. Some cracking challenges. Um, she was up against quality, especially when Hosford was was up against her, and Hosford did get round her and, and get a few crosses in. It's got to be said though that Hosford mostly profited when Swansea got their build-up play right were able to isolate her against Davis and then slide it down the outside so Hosford could run onto it. And Davis, being isolated because Wrexham's 4 2 3 one doesn't naturally give her a lot of cover. There wasn't that much she could do about it. When Hosford actually tried to f front up to Davis and square her up and go up and dribble past her, she was playing into Davis's hands. So Davis made some great tackles. So although you know, Hosford got in, made a lot of chances down that side, which you'd normally measure a full-back by. But having said that, I think there were tactical and strategic reasons behind a lot of the times she did get that service in. On the left-hand side, I mean, Aaron Lovett, again, so wholehearted, what a tackler. I said in the commentary that there's some sort of DNA link between Darren Brace, Joey Jones, and those two fullbacks. They've got the same warrior spirit. Uh, and Lovett did very, very well, really making a lot of strong tackles. And there was not much that came down the right hand side for Swansea. The centre backs, both making their debuts, wow, these are good additions to the squad. I mean, Karen Allen, the captain, proper leadership role, strong in the in defence, strong in the tackle, made one glorious run up the middle of the pitch, just driving through, beat four Swansea players. <laughs> it was really great to watch. And against less strong opposition, she'll do that and she'll be getting right through. That was tremendous play. Um, for me, Luisa Doran was the player of the match. I thought she was outstanding. She's just attacking everything. Winning tackles, really dominant in the air. Made that terrific header early on when it was nil nil to put the ball over her own bar. And also, she drives the ball. She strikes it beautifully. And often created chances by driving the ball over the top for Hughes to run onto. Hughes scoring and assisted by Doran, I suspect, could become a feature of how Wrexham played this season. And in the middle of the pitch, as I said earlier, Lily Jones and TJ Dickens, real grit and determination. My goodness me, I mean, they got in a full 90 minutes, both of them, and really never stopped running. Terrific energy, brilliant assist for Jones. Dickens as well, um, as I said in the commentary, a really valuable player, doing a, sometimes an unglamorous job of just filling the gaps in midfield. But a sure-footed tackler, and some really nice progressive passing from her as well. Gibbard, well, she has experience in the top division. It showed she was playing behind the front three. 
And yeah, there was some really nice assist play, not least feeding the ball forwards down the right channel in order to set up the first goal. But yeah, she she had some really nice quality touches trying to link to the, uh, the attackers. Had to drop deeper in the second half, really, to, to fight and try to protect the goal, but had a good game. On the left-hand side, Amber Lightfoot had some good breaks, although maybe a best work as when she was coming back and covering to help out Erin Lovett, who tireless effort as always. On the right-hand side, well, Rebecca Pritchard again, just showing that quality, quality finish. Unlucky to be flagged offside for another goal. And again, just constant battling away. She really does do a good shift, dropping back to help out, but then comes forwards and is a real threat. And Rosie Hughes was Rosie Hughes. Scored. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much par for the course. Excellent hold up play as well. Terrific running over the top. Unlucky to be flagged offside on at least one occasion. And unlucky not to be given a, a last gasp chance to make it 4 3 by the final whistle. So fine performance by her. Charlotte Doran came on. Uh, Charlotte Bollins came on for her debut and made that good save at a striker's feet. Couldn't really do much about the goals, in all honesty. Um, Hannah Karakopoulos, well, I mean, <laughs> debut goal. Can't complain about that, can you? Uh, really strong and aggressive presence in the Swansea half and was did an important role in trying to keep the pressure off Rexham's penalty area too. And then the third substitute, now Cara Jones, came on on the left-hand side and you know what? It was, in many ways, I think, the perfect situation for her style of play. Playing on the left in a, in a forwards progressive role but in a situation where the team were having to fight hard and she had to keep her discipline positionally as well to help out when we didn't have the ball. And the number of times she battled for the ball and managed to fight for it and win it and help it on uh, was impressive. So a, a good debut for her as well. So, so yeah, that was great entertainment. Terrific performance by Wrexham. A good noisy crowd as well getting behind the team. That was a treat. So the side... Go again on Sunday at Pontypridd, but an excellent start to the season for the women. With a final score of Wrexham 3, Swansea City 3, I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC.